Come on, declare, declare. My God. I know. you up in this place tonight you're the lion of judah we thank you for who you are that you're here with us god of jacob the great i am
He can only imitate. He cannot create. But our King Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. What does that mean? It means he is a warrior king. And when he roars, everything in this earth trembles. Every gate is open. Listen to this scripture. Two years ago, two years before this year, in January of 2021, God released a prophecy in this house that it was time to go out and dig ditches in the desert. It was time to prepare the way for the Lord. That God was going to do something like he's never done before in this house and that we need to be prepared for it. January of 2021, we bring Pastor Jim Critcher in and God just blows the roof off this place. Since then, we've had hundreds of healings, deliverances, and miracles manifest in people's lives. Now watch this now. I'm going to give you, I don't know that I ever did it, but I'm going to give you the vision for breakthrough services. It comes right out of Micah chapter 2. It says, in the last days, I will gather my people together. I will bring them together like sheep in a pen. Look around you. We look like some sheep in a pen. And it says, they will be noisy amongst themselves. Yeah, that's our part. And then it goes on to prophesy that out of those people will rise the one who will break them through. And then it goes on to say, speaking of Jesus, the one that will break them through. Yes, their king will break them through the gates. Their Lord is at their head. I'm here to tell you tonight, Jesus is in our midst. And when we are noisy with people, when we are noisy for the Lord, when we understand that our mouth is a weapon, when we understand that the expectancy that we have in our heart is the breeding ground for Jesus to do the miracles, when we understand that there is nothing that is impossible for those who believe in Jesus, then he will rise up. He will break us through. I believe tonight is the beginning of a new era on our breakthrough services. I believe tonight God is going to break through in ways that you could only imagine. You see, I came in with the attitude of expectancy because I'm believing for a miracle in my physical body. I have today decided that I will follow Jesus no matter what the enemy brings my way. And I just want to encourage you. As we go back in and start to sing, let all restraint off. Let me tell you what God is looking for. Revival or riot? And I'm gonna tell you what the word riot means. It means an outbreak of unrestrained passion. In other words, God wants to do revival in our midst. And what he's looking for is us to throw off the restraints and be passionate about the king who is the passion who gave his life for us. So let's sing it and let's sing it like we mean it. Let's sing it from the depths of our heart. Come on.
stay in this attitude of worship. Jesus is worthy because he paid the price that no one else could pay. He's worthy because all God inhabited mankind. So he knew what it was like to go through the things that we go through in this life. And yet he never sinned. He never fell short. And he surely didn't miss the mark of what God had called him to do, was to give his life as a ransom for ours. And they're already in heaven right now singing what we're singing today. But one day we will be with him for every day of all eternity, and we will be able to worship him in all of his splendor, in all of his glory. And just tell him every day how worthy he is. I just think we don't want to lose sight of that until we get there. And communion is one of the things that God has given us to help us not to forget. Jesus said we should do communion and do it always in remembrance of him. That we should remember the sacrifice that was paid as a juice represents the blood that was shed and the bread represents the body that was beaten and torn to pieces for our sake. And the word communion itself means to come into unity with one. So when we partake of communion, we're not only remembering what Jesus did, but we're coming into unity with the one who did it. And that scripture I read to you earlier, when the remnant gather together and become noisy for God, their king rises up before them and breaks them through. I want you to know this, God wants your healing more than you do. God wants your breakthrough more than you do. God wants your marriage restored more than you do. God wants your children serving him more than you do. God wants it so much more than we could ever imagine. And the beautiful part of that is, is our king. When we're together like this, he's here. He is rising up. He is going before us. In other words, your healing is right in front of you. It's already waiting. It's just waiting on you. It's waiting on you to reach out and believe by faith that it's yours. Your marriage being restored is waiting on you, just waiting for you to reach out and grab a hold of it so that you can be restored. These children down front are praying for one another and on their faces and knees crying out to God. It's such a beautiful sight. The next generation is already getting it. We're not going to lose them. 
Listen to me, church. City Reach Church will not lose the next generation. We will win the next generation for Jesus. And it's nights like this that you have took the time and you have walked out the obedience and you've made the sacrifice to make sure that you're here. And it's times like this when you bring your kids into moments like this and, and the room when God is moving like this that, that their, their lives are forever marked. They'll never forget a night like this. And we shouldn't either. We shouldn't forget what God has done for us. So in just a moment, we're going to partake of communion and we're going to honor Jesus. But I want to tell you just a couple more benefits that the Word of God promises those who receive communion. It says when you partake of the juice, which represents the blood of Jesus, that you are literally partaking of the healing, the, the healing power that is within the blood of Jesus. That when you drink of the wine, which this is juice, but when you drink of it, that the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. If you're battling depression tonight, if you're battling anxiety, if you're battling fear, not any longer, when you attach your faith to this, and you receive the joy of the Lord, it will become your strength. When you partake of that wafer, it says that we can stand in faith and believe that our bodies are whole and they are healed because by His stripes, we are already healed. You're just waiting on it to manifest. See, this is why I'm putting off surgery because I know I'm already healed. I'm just waiting on it to manifest, so I'm putting off the knife long enough to see the manifestation of the supernatural power of God. I believe in the supernatural power of God, and I know that it is relevant, it is prevalent in our midst today, and I'm standing in faith. What are you standing in faith for? Don't take communion without standing in faith for something. So I just want to encourage you, on your seat, there's a little cute white bag with a cup of it that's two parts a little child proof film there that you got to peel back to get to the wafer and then the juice is underneath the foil and in just a moment we're going to partake of this while the worship team just sings worthy of it all as we give the greatest homage and honor to Jesus as we possibly can but I will encourage you tonight believe have faith Let's believe God for the impossible because He is the God of the impossible. He is a God that makes a new thing out of nothing. And you may feel like there's no way in the world that this is going to get better for you in whatever circumstance or situation it is, but He's the God who makes new things out of nothing. So what can He do with something that's already there? We're already something. We're here. Our circumstances are something. So I encourage you, we're going to pray a prayer here in just a moment but before we do that I want to encourage you make sure you attach your faith tonight to the spiritual act this isn't a religious thing a traditional thing this is a spiritual moment we're going to encounter Jesus in and I'm asked just right where you're standing if you can just bow your head close your eyes just for a moment because the final piece of communion is that Jesus says that we should never partake of communion without first evaluating our heart and making sure that our heart is set right before God. For if we partake of communion without repentance in our heart, then we are inviting the wrath of God into our lives and we surely do not want that. So I just want to ask you today is, do you know? Do you know that you know that you know that Jesus is the Lord of your life? You know what it's like to be forgiven and washed clean, to be redeemed of every sin, every mistake you've ever made. Have you experienced what it's like for him literally to cleanse you, to take your wrongs and cast them as far as the east is from the west, to, to plunge them to the depths of the sea? You know, Jesus knew everything you would ever do, and yet he did what he did anyway because he wanted to give his best for our worst. And that's what the exchange of salvation looks like is it's you just literally saying, you know what, I'm not good enough, and I can't figure this out. But Jesus, you already figured it out, and you're more than good enough, so I want to give it to you. It's laying it down on his feet and letting Jesus do what he does best, and that is lift burdens, ease minds, forgive sins, empower his people. So that's you today. And you don't know that you know in your heart, or maybe you're here and you've been, you've been playing games with God. I'm going to tell you to you real frankly. Sometimes you're not meaning to, but you still catch yourself doing it anyway. You're gambling with your own eternity, your own soul, and 
And that's not the kind of gamble you should gamble with. No one has been promised tomorrow. But all of us have right now. And right now I'm challenging you. Stop. And make it real. Make it real with Jesus. So if that's you and you want to say yes to Jesus or recommit a yes that you know you need to recommit. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to simply lift your hand nice and high in the air. We're going to pray a prayer. And then we're going to partake of communion together. Hands are going up. If that's you on three, put it up. One, two, three. Hands are going up all over the room. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. To be bold like that, you don't have to be embarrassed about anything. You just got to be willing and your hand up is showing God, this is my point of faith. I'm willing. Take that hand, just lay it right on your heart. We're going to pray this prayer together. And I want everybody here, let's join in and let's all pray because we want to make sure. We know we're saved, those of us that are confident in our salvation, but it's still good before we take communion to honor Jesus for what he's done, for who he is. So let's all say it and back them up as a good church family. Let's say it where our own two ears can hear. Just say, Jesus, I believe in you. You are the Son of God. You gave your life for me. Now I give my life to you. Forgive me for every sin, every mistake I've ever made. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. From this day forward, I dedicate my life to you. Send to me your Holy Spirit to live in me, to guide me, to help me. Jesus, thank you for what you've done for me. You gave your life for me. You rose from the dead for me. And tonight I come into unity with you. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. Jesus, I receive you now. Amen. Amen. Let's partake of communion together.
Now, can we get a little noisy again and just thank Jesus for how good he is? Come on. Yeah. You know what I mean. He's so worthy. thank the worship team just for just abandoning self and being a vessel of honor, a conduit for Jesus to you. You may be seated. I want to tell you as your pastor, I'm proud of you. Let's not lose this hunger. Let's not lose this thirst. Jesus said for those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. I saw some cowboy fans in here with cowboy jerseys on while the cowboys are playing. You're letting God know right now who's first in your life. For a cowboy fan, that's a big deal. Proud of you for that. And tonight, let's expect. Let's expect for God to do what only God can do. We're not just doing another service. That's not what this has been. It's not what it will be. We're coming after God. We're pursuing God with everything that we have in our heart. And we are standing in faith and believing for a breakthrough. I'm standing in faith and believing for your breakthrough. For our King to rise up among us and to break us through the gates. Whatever those gates are, whether it's sickness, whether it's disease, whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety, whether it's, whether it's divorce, whether it's frustration, whether it's lack. I believe Jesus is rising in our midst and breaking us through each and every gate. He is our King. He is our Lord. And He loves to do it for His people. I said this a few weeks ago, but I just want to remind you. Sometimes we think that this war that we're in, this spiritual war that we're in, is this raging, really 50-50 war that's going on. And sometimes God wins and sometimes the devil wins. And I can tell you that Satan has been defeated for millennia upon millennia upon millennia. There's no real fight here. It is truly a fixed fight. It's settled. It's finished. Not just because I read the back of the book, because Jesus defeated him at the cross. He has been defeated since 0 AD, right? So he's been defeated this entire time. And when we come in with that attitude and that posture, nothing is impossible for those who believe. Amen? So as I told you this morning, we made a phone call two weeks ago to Pastor Jim Critcher. And just threw it out there. I told him tonight, man, I'm going to keep doing this just so you know you better get used to it. We need the prophetic in our church. We need the, the office of a prophet in operation at City Reach Church. It's the only way to bring the whole five-fold gift together that God can do what God wants to do. And I'm super honored to know Pastor Jim, and I'm super honored to be able to have him in each and every time we get to have him in. But I just told him I'm coming after you more now. I'm just going to keep asking. You're going to start saying no. But it's an honor to have you, sir. I mean this. God used you. God chose you to start something here that hasn't stopped. Nine months straight, we keep experiencing. The prophecy you had in June is that healings are going to start to take place in the parking lot, the lobby, before worship ever begins in the sanctuary. That's already begun. We've had three or four healings take place from the park. People just walk into the building, and all of a sudden, God just touching their physical body or someone from our team walking up and praying for them and, and seeing a miracle take place right in front of their eyes. You prophesied that we're going to continue to win more souls, more souls than we could think. In, in August, Daniel, pay attention for a second. No, in August, it was what? 690 people gave their life to Jesus in the month of August. It's amazing. In the summer, we had to move the four services on Sunday morning in the summer. We were trying to hold it till September, and we just couldn't hold it back anymore. So I want to thank you for being true to what God speaks into your heart. We trust you. We love you. And I tell you, sir, do what only you can do with God at the helm. Amen. Can we please give Pastor Jim Critcher one big huge City Reach Church, Austin, Texas, welcome. All right. I get in a moment like this and get a bit overwhelmed because I don't know where to start. I, 
I don't want to get weird right out of the box. <laughs> but I heard Jesus dispatching angels. Listen to me. Now, angels, it can get, it can get weird fast. Hear me. But I heard Jesus dispatching angels to bring your prodigals home. Yeah. Prodigal children. Prodigal siblings. Prodigal parents. And prodigal spouses. I want you to hear this. And there's some that you've been out of touch with for months and in some cases years. Hear me. Their feet will be under your table at Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. You see, Jesus specializes in prodigals. And if you don't think that, look in the mirror when you go home. But he's going to do it because he told me he's going to do it. And there's a testimony forming. Hear me. Sitting there looking at these amazing young warriors at this altar. The Spirit of the Lord says to you, my son and daughters, is that this is yet the tithe. A down payment. For there is an ingathering of youth coming to this house that is going to be unprecedented like anything that you've seen before. God would even say that there are doors that I'm opening in middle and high schools that have previously been closed. Hear me, says God. And the river that runs through it, that starts at the altar... It runs through this house. It runs through these young men and women. That same river will run into those schools. Hear me. And fishermen will stand on the banks. And not only will young men and women come into the power, saving knowledge of the gospel. Hear me, says the Lord. But teachers, administrators will come with them. City Reach is going to reach into schools. And you're going to have congregations, not just youth ministry, not just outreach. You're going to have congregations within these schools. And God's going to do something. That all of the bad news about this generation the unchurched, the, un, the uncommitted, the nons, not here. There's a level of engagement of the things of the Holy Ghost. It's going to be amazing. I tell you about the Spirit of the Lord, it's going to happen. And I'm not talking in dozens and hundreds, but before it's all said and done, thousands, thousands are going to be touched. Amen. That'd be a good opportunity for you to respond right there, by the way. It is a profound privilege to be here in this church. I, I, I get to travel a bit, and it, the, the miracle that this guy can call me on the phone in between a trip, a 10-day conference in, in Hawaii to Los Angeles, and then I'm home for one weekend preaching in our local congregations, which I can move. That's the weekend that you needed again, by the way. <laughs> and then out to South Africa next weekend. But here we are in this moment. You just know how to pick them, brother. I'm just telling you. 
But I love coming to this house. I love your pastors. I love the leaders. But what I love is the ditches that you've dug. I want you to hear this. And that the expectation, and not just on a Sunday night once a month, but I'm talking about just corporately, that the water level is rising, but there's a place for the water to run. Let me just tell you, that's an amazing thing. But this evening, for a moment, before we minister and see what else God has to do, I want to talk a bit more about preparation. Now, if I come again, and I hope I will, I'm going to be preaching revival until I'm dead. Because I know that my life message is going to be sure that the church doesn't miss anything that God is doing and pouring out in this hour. That's my life message. That's it, Pastor. When I came the first time in January, I spoke a message entitled, Check Your Oil, Survival or Revival. That there was going to be very little in between those two extremes. We're going to be hanging on, hoping, whatever your eschatology is of whether or not you're going to get raptured ah, ah, before things get real bad, or you're going to be left down here, whatever your eschatology is, let me just tell you, is that you're either going to be under the water spout of the revival of God in this hour, or you're going to be hanging on for dear life. And there's not going to be much in between those two extremes. I don't know about you. I'm tired of just surviving. I'm ready to thrive. I'm ready to get soaked in what which God is pouring out in this hour. And I talked at that time about the merger of expectation and preparation. Expectation, yes, a component of faith, those things that we hope for not yet seen. But if we truly believe God's about to do something, we're going to do what? We're going to dig some ditches. We're going to put out our open containers to be filled with the oil of the Holy Ghost. We're going to prepare and do something about it. Maybe we might even need to build a bigger building. You didn't get that. Listen, this building is not for you. I hate to be the one to tell you. Well, wait a minute. I'm the one paying. No, you're not. God's going to pay for it. He's going to pay for it. He's going to do some miracles through your lives financially. You watch. Because it's not about getting more seats and a bigger parking lot. It's about God showing himself and increasing faith in your life and in this house as he increases you. That's the deposit. It's not property. That's the byproduct. The product is faith. And when you get to the back end of that thing and you are rejoicing the first time, let me tell you, it'll be look what God did. But let me just tell you, it's not for you. It's for them. It's for them. That's why you're doing this. That's the preparation being made for what God is doing in this moment. But we know that God never wastes anything. Anything. friend of mine who's a pastor buried his 26-year-old son. It's a man that's familiar with pain. He made this statement. He says, God never wastes a hurt. Let me tell you. You might think you carefully recycle. You don't know nothing about recycling. God never wastes a thing. But you see, that's a principle that we need to understand coming into this season that we're in right now. That God is not going to pour himself out on or in a people where there's no room for that to occur. Stay with me. Luke, the fifth chapter, and you know this well. Jesus speaking a parable here. No one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it on an old. If he does, he will have torn the new garment and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one 
pours new wine into an old wine skin, if he does, the new wine will burst the skins, the wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. New wine must be poured into new wine skins. And no one after drinking the old wants the new, for he says the old is better. Lord, help us tonight. I got to tell you, I'm really happy to live in 2023. To be here in Austin, Texas, the home of Yeti. (laughs) That we've got glass and plastic and Yeti and Tupperware. I guess they still make that. And all this wonderful stuff that we don't have to carry around our water anymore in the skin of a dead goat. (laughs) I'm real happy about that, Pastor. How disgusting. What you got there, dead slung on your arm? Oh, this is my gallon of water I got to drink every day. I'm really happy for the technology and food preservation and storage and the hour and the day that we live in. And yet, do you realize that we are those wineskins? You and I are transport mechanisms for the Holy Spirit. That's what you and I are. But you see, wineskins were never designed to be long-term storage vehicles. They were designed to be temporary for moving something from one place to the next. It's why when God pours himself into a people, a church, into an individual, the idea, it's not just going to sit there and ferment and begin to take on the funk of a dead goat or sheep. It's designed to be poured back out and to keep that oil, that wine, moving. Amen? One theologian wrote and said it this way. In a real sense, the wineskin is God's people. In each generation, God does something new with his people. There's always a new wineskin for every new thing God does. And he goes on and he speaks about Pentecost, that there needed to be a new wineskin which was fresh, pliable, and that was the church. Every new outpouring of God must always be preceded by the preparation of a new wineskin. That seems obvious. But let me tell you, what's obvious is arduous. It's difficult. It's painful. Why is that? Because wineskins require death. I alluded to some of this back in January. But I need to come back to it tonight. So let's talk about wineskins personally and corporately. The first is flexibility. Most of us in here are change averse. We are. We not only go to the same restaurants, but when we get to that restaurant, we order the same thing. Correct? I'm sorry. I was having a marvelous sanctified barbecue discussion on the way over about the, 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 you know, Rudy's versus, what is that place an hour away? Cooper. Cooper's. I'm in Texas. Them, them fighting words as who's got the best barbecue. But you go to a restaurant and you order the same thing. Cheesecake factory. Can we talk about that just for a moment? The horror of that menu. I got in front of my church one year. I said, my goal, everybody's got their resolutions. My resolution for 20 whatever it was is to eat my way through the entire Cheesecake Factory menu. There was only one problem. My wife heard me say that. And where the Bible says that a wife should be silent in the church, she failed She said, no, you won't, and I'll tell your doctor if you try. 
But here's Cheesecake Factory. We're ordering the same thing every time. Why? Because we're change averse. We know what we like. We, we like what we know. And the older we get, the more inflexible we get. It's why it takes us longer to get up out of the chair now. <laughs> that we, we, we did the, one, one of the eight trips to the bathroom during the night, we're very careful of how we get off the bed so as not to fall in the middle of the floor at 4 a.m. It's embarrassing because we're less flexible than we were at one time. But my goodness, blessed are the flexible for they shall not be broken. The flexibility of our revelation of who this God really is not the construct of who we want him to be, but the God of the Bible. With all of the blood, guts, horror, yes, grace, mercy, and love, he's the same guy. One of my favorite authors, R.T. Kendall, wrote a book not too long ago entitled, Your God is Too Nice. And our theology, our rational thought about who God is, has to remain flexible. If you're like I am, most of what I knew about God 50 years ago when I first started walking with him, it's quite a bit different today. And the real goof of that is that God hasn't changed at all. His immutability, his not changing, doesn't change. But man, our revelation of who he is, it's constantly changing. Our flexibility of the ways of God has to change. Well, this is how God has to do it. Says who? My goodness. But yet, with that wineskin, do you know that that wineskin is at its place of maximum flexibility closest to the morbidity of the animal from which it was taken. Death, flexibility. Morbidity, flexibility. Please send that guy back. Don't invite him back, Pastor. <laughs> and some of you have been in that cycle of things around your life seemingly dying. And you wonder, where's the revival? Where's all this wonderful manifestation in my life? Because all I'm experiencing in this moment seems to be death. Congratulations. Because there's this amazing principle of death before resurrection. We all want resurrection. We just don't want the death to precede it. We all want miracles. We just don't want miracle circumstances. We all want the rain of God. We just don't want the storm clouds that bring the rain. You can't have it both ways. And for those of you who have felt like there's so much seemingly dying around my life, congratulations. God is working a flexibility in your wineskin. Because with that flexibility, comes God's ability to pour more in. Are you with me? Come on. More of God. Why? But what preceded it? Death. This is a part of our discipleship we don't talk about a whole lot. And yet it's pretty biblical. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We carry around in our bodies the death of Christ. And we who are alive, always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. My goodness. And our wineskin of relational revelation has to always be expanding. Hear me. If we come and go through a meeting like this, or a season of revival and outpouring of God. And what we get is our bodies healed, our bank accounts fatter, and our marriage is better. And we don't know God better. We've missed it. We've missed it. 
But then there's capacity. How many of you know God never has a supply problem? Come on. I know you're still damaged from the toilet paper crisis of 2021. (laughs) We'll get you some healing before you leave here tonight, all right? But we get the passages of Scripture like Ephesians 3, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Somebody smarter than me, please explain what that means. The fullness of God. Ephesians, again, chapter 1, verse 21, talks about the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. But let me ask you a question. Is there any room for God in your construct? In other words, are you full of it? That's never a compliment. I mean, when I'm pontificating and, you know, walking around the house and doing, and my wife just says, Honey, I love you, but you're full of it. And she's rarely referring to the Holy Ghost in a moment like that. But the question for you and me is, what are we full of? Because if we're already full of YouTube and kitty cat videos and social media and sports trivia, let me just tell you, God just stops pouring in a moment like that. Hate to be the one to tell you. Well, where's God in my life? What are you full of? And let me say, in this process of death before resurrection, don't ever underestimate what your loving Father will do to make room in your life for Him. This isn't a threat. This is Bible exegesis. Read some. The book of Job shouldn't be there. You ever wanted to kind of edit your own Bible? (laughs) Velcro pages, you could take some out and put them back in in different. Job would not be one I would have put in there. Forty some odd chapters of tearing a man's life to pieces, turning him upside down, pouring him out on the basis of what? God? I had it all wrong about you. You mean, yeah, his family and his health and his friends and all of the stuff that he went through was on the basis of insufficient revelation? Yep. That's what it was. My goodness, don't think that God won't have a moment or two in your lifetime that he will turn you upside down. And empty you out so that he can fill you back up. My goodness. You and I are not exempt. And then lastly, the integrity of the wine flowing in and the wine flowing back out. In other words, is what's flowing into our life the same wine that's flowing out of our life? Or do we just taste, taste like dead goat? So that the wine steward, I have a lovely red for you tonight. It has the odor of a goat's behind. <laughs> Thank you. You may take that back. I told the story about my wife and the water in our home. My tea-drinking aficionado wife that lets the water run. Because she can taste the pipes of the water that's been sitting overnight in the copper pipes in our home. I can taste it. (laughs) Eight hours sitting in the copper pipes and she can taste that edge. My God, that Jesus would make us that sensitive to the wine flowing out of our lives as to what got picked up on the way out taste and see that the Lord is good not Pastor Chris not Pastor Jim taste and see that the Lord is good let me tell you the world is not looking 
for a Jesus-flavored version of you. They're not looking for an improved version of your humanity. That's not the definition of sanctification. Sanctification is being less like you and more like Jesus. And you didn't read the sign that the fine print, but you signed up for a lifetime of God messing with you. God, why are you doing it? You signed it. I don't remember. I know. <laughs> you mean, uh, some time ago, Pastor Chris, my wife, and we were, we were in it. I was full of it. We were in it. And I said, what is it that you want from me? You know, husbands, how we finally get to that moment, you know, that we're, we're dealing with all of these expectations, these unspoken expectations, you know, just the, the kind of the looks. The looks. It's just like, just use a word. Call me a jerk. Just use a word. And we were in it. And she finally said, I just want you to be like Jesus. Well, at least it's out there. But you know, it's Real as that moment was, the revival we're talking about is on the inside of you. It's not coming off this stage. It's not happening down here. It's not going to shoot out of the air conditioner vents. I'm not one that holds to molting, molting angels and feathers and jewels. I'm, that's, not my, that's not my gig. I'm convinced that the revival is right here. And that you and I hold the faucet to allowing that revival, that river, to flow out of each one of us. And tonight, that's the invitation. Is to examine our wineskins. We just did it over the table. The death that you've been experiencing, congratulations. God's been bringing flexibility in your life that there might be greater capacity to receive what he's pouring out in this moment. But that God is also checking to be sure that the flavor of that dead thing, that old man is not getting picked up as that wine gets released back out of our life. Are you with me here? And I'll close with this. The whole reason that a wineskins were developed was for mobility. So that you could move this wine or oil or water from one place to the next. Let me tell you, there is a demand of not just flexibility, but mobility that God is placing on us, on us as well in this hour. Let me tell you, there's going to be a, there's a lot of movement happening right now. And it's not the enemy uprooting. It's God's movement. People moving into Austin. Yes, some people moving out. But let me tell you, don't be afraid of the mobility that God is demanding of some of you in these days to come. Don't be trying to rebuke the door. I love it here. I know you do. I got all that. But let me just encourage you. Be very careful. Be flexible, be mobile, and watch what God does. Amen. Amen. Lord, help us tonight. Lord, we want to be wineskins for your purpose. Lord, every one of us have these places where we're inflexible, locked up, in ridiculous places, those things that we just like. Lord, let us embrace the death that we might embrace the life. In Jesus' name, amen.
there were two little people, smaller versions of you. Are they here? Could I have the smaller versions of these people over here? Both of you. Hello, young man. Tell me what your name is. Lewis. Lewis. How old are you, Lewis? I'm 12. 12. Wow. And you are? I'm Nobu. I'm 16. Beautiful. All right. Amazing. The Lord would say to you, my daughter, is that you have an amazing combination, very much like mom and dad. Very smart, very intuitive, communicative. You know, you're not afraid with an opinion. But there's a, and there's a, a very interesting sort of sweet and sour thing that kind of flows through you. It's interesting. Uh, back in the day, we used to have this candy that was, I think it was called Zots. Something weird like that. But it was sweet on the outside, but you got in the middle, it's like, whoa! All right? I, there's probably something like today, all right? But that's kind of how you are. And so if someone just looks at you and just says, oh, she's just so sweet, hang around for about two more minutes. Because there'll be, there'll be some truth that will come out. But dear, you have a way of dispensing it in such a way that is almost surgical. And God is going to use you to open the lives of men and women. God's going to give you a word of knowledge. He's already happening. He's going to give you words of wisdom. You're going to know what to say exactly in the moment that you need it, not before. And he's going to have you pe speaking to people throughout your life. And you're going to wonder, why am I here? I don't belong in this room. These people are older than I am. They have more education than I have. It doesn't matter. Because God is going to place you literally in the courts of the kings. It's going to happen. A lot of education ahead for you. Tons. Glad you like school, and I'm glad you're so smart. Um, and it's going to be a very interesting educational journey. All right? Uh, and, and there's going to be some study abroad that's going to happen with it before it's all done as well. It's the nations are part of your future. And I don't see it being a long-term assignment, but God's going to use you in many different places before it's all said and done. And let me also say to you that things are going to happen very, very fast. There's going to be an acceleration, and, you know, mom and dad are just going to have to just hang on to the tailwind of Jesus because things are going to begin to move at a, at a much faster pace that at times they're even comfortable with. I want you to hear that. You're an amazing young woman. Be careful. I'm not trying to embarrass you, but hear this. Don't give your heart away prematurely. You know, you're, you're a very wise young woman, but you, you, have, a, you have a romantic part. Okay? You, have a, you can have a bit of a romantic outlook on life and people, et cetera, and so forth. And you've already... And I'm not talking about B-O-Y-Z now. I'm talking about just life. And you've already had your heart hurt just a little bit with some friends that sort of found out that, ooh, they, they got prickles. Um, be very careful that you don't give your heart away prematurely. Amen. Very serious guy. All right. But there's a leadership gift that's on you. You're... You've always, you've always kind of been a little bit old for your age, okay? Um, I mean, there's, there's, for you, there's just two ways, the right way and the wrong way. There's God's way, and then there's no other way. There's, not, there's no gray anywhere in your life whatsoever, and that's just how you've always been wired. It can also create at times some internal tension and frustration on the inside of you because you see a lot of things around you, a lot of people sometimes operating in all kinds of shades of gray. But there's a leadership gift that's on you. It's huge. And God's going God's to give you a communication gift that's going to be accurate. It's going to be sharp. Um, you're going to find yourself in charge of a lot of stuff. I, I don't know what your educational situation is, but, um, but if, if there's a, a, a class election or something, you, it's going to be, Lewis, 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 Lewis. You're going to be in charge of everything, champ. Let me just tell you how that's going to work. Because there's leadership that's big that's on your life. All right? There's also, let me say to you that um, God's going to give you your own armor to walk around in. You know, you're, 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 
you are delightful, a delightful son. And it's easy for you to just take dad's armor and put it on, try to walk in it. But it's not your armor. It's, not, it, 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 it's his. And I see God giving you your own armor. And these next couple of years are going to be the greatest days of defining for you. Don't be afraid of it. And it's going to look for a moment like, I feel like I'm losing my mind. You're not. You're just going to try on some different armor to see what actually fits you. All right? Mom and dad, wow. Well done. Well done. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hi. Did I prophesy over you before? Okay. Tell me your name. Kimby. Kimby. I love that. How old are you, Kimby? I'm 20. Okay. What are you doing right now? I work with the kids in Boston. Okay. That's marvelous. The Lord said to you, my daughter, is that you're not left out and you're not left behind. I want you to hear this. Sometimes, dear, you just feel like everybody else is getting on with their life. They're getting married. They've got boyfriends. They're going off to college. They're doing all these amazing things. And you just feel like, well, I just, this is all I do. This is what I do. Let me just tell you, it's not all you do. And it's not all you are. And you haven't missed anything. You haven't missed a thing. I want you to hear this. And, 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 and let me say that you are being excavated. It's like finding, it's like finding a vein of gold. And it's like it just keeps coming. And that's how it is with you. People know that, but you don't yet. And God's going to begin to give you some of the greatest reflection and the greatest revelation of how amazing a woman that you really are because you don't know it yet. But the Spirit of God tonight, there's, there's one or two people in this room, but the Spirit of God is talking to you and saying you're amazing. You haven't missed anything, and you haven't been left out, and you haven't been left behind. Amen. Hi there. What's your name? Aaron. Aaron? It's a good name. Are you guys a set, a pair, a gaggle? Okay. <laughs> Husband and wife? What's your name, dear? Sarah. Sarah. Good Bible names. All right. What do you do, Aaron? I'm Joseph Lewis. Okay. All right. Good work. Thank you very much. You give yourself a discount. No, I'm sorry. That's bad. Um, we were in worship. I looked back at you, and the Lord said, he's an evangelist. And now that I know what you do in the natural, now I know that's true. Because you are. You're an accidental evangelist. And people that are coming for one thing, they're coming to get marked in one way, they're going to get marked in another way. I want you to hear this. And that God is going to use you. And brother, you don't have to open chapter and verse. You don't got to go to seminary, learn Greek and Hebrew. You just got to let what's inside of you just naturally just flow out. You're a good man. You love people. You care for people. It's been hard, though. It's been very difficult. You guys have been through an unusually trying season, the Lord shows me. It's like you've been bombarded almost from every side. Financially, physically, relationally, family dynamics. It's just like, it, it, it's, it's almost like a, 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 a boxer on the ropes and just continuing to just take it. You know, did you ever box, by the way? It's, it's, like, it's like a boxer on the ropes, and he's just, it, it, he's just punch drunk, and he, and, and he just keeps getting pounded and pounded and pounded. And it's like, when is the ref going to throw? When, 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 when are we going to hear the bell? And it seems like the bell's not coming. The bell's coming. I hear it. But it's not just a bell to end the warfare. Let me tell you. It is the chiming of bells that are victory bells in your life. You're overcoming some things generationally that have been messing with you. You've got a long line of things that have been trying to mess with you. All right? And, they've been, and it's been loud and the battle has been intense. 
particularly even over the past few weeks. And you've, and you've shared, and, and, and brother, you've done the right thing. You haven't gone in a cave. You haven't got, kind of kept it to yourself. But I want to tell you both by the Spirit of Christ tonight, not only are you going to make it, you've already made it. I want you to hear this. Your testimony is already being spoken in heaven, even in this particular moment. And the two of you are trophies of grace. And every curse of infirmity that comes off the, uh, the maternal side of your family, everything is broken. And, you're gonna, and, and if it hasn't happened yet, there is a, a diagnosis that's forthcoming, and it's going to scare you bad. Remember this prophecy. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. Amen? Thank you. Dare to hope one more time. It's, it's like you've been asking for something, and it seems like God's gone. He's not picking up the phone anymore. It's like he's gone deaf. And yet the admonition is to keep on knocking and keep on asking. And God says, you're literally about one knock away from seeing a door that's been closed to you. I want you to hear this. And you've, you've done everything that you know what to do. And, and, and some of it's relational. Some of it's vocational. You've had, a, you've had a number of doors that seemingly have just been slammed and barred and shut in your face. God says, knock one more time, and I'm going to open that door. Let me tell you, God's going to also use you to set captives free. I see you going and literally God giving you a, 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 a big string of keys. And I see you unlocking doors in men's and women's lives and seeing them set free. But God's going to open your door first. Amen. This is always so weird, you know. <laughs> pick me. No, don't pick me. What is he doing? Hi. What's your name? Nick. Nick. Are you, you no. You just <laughs> Nothing prophetic. It was just a question. Nick. All right. Nick, are you married? Okay. What's your wife's name? Rachel. Rachel. Good. Uh, what do you do, Nick? I sell drugs. Okay. Very good. You know, Nick, I see God raising the ceiling over your life. It's been, you, you, you're a man, it's, it's, it's like, you, you, you've been like this most of your life. And you, you bumping against some ceiling. Some ceiling of limitation. Some of it was things that were spoken to you early. That were spoken to you. And, and whether it was intended or whether it was unintended, you just felt like, well, this is, this is Nick. This is all Nick is, all Nick's ever going to be. But the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm coming not only to raise the ceiling, but to remove the ceiling around your life. Hear me. You're a good man. You really are. And yet there's some things that seemingly have been held back from you. And you wonder, what do I need to do differently? How do I need to posture myself? How do I need to pray? And God says, it's not you. But hear me, my son. I'm about to bring you and your household into the greatest days of openness and blessing that you've ever known. What, is your, what does your wife do at the church? Sure, I'm glad I didn't talk about her oppressive boss, okay? Um, so, whew, thank you, Jesus. Um, you have children? You have children? Yes. How many? Uh, one daughter. Wow, okay. She's going to dance. She's going to be a uh, girly girl. Um, she already owns both your heart and your wallet, all right? <laughs> You are you're a great dad. You do it. You do that well, and you and your God's going to use you and your wife in some remarkable ways to heal marriages. As a matter of fact, you're you're not a guy that's going to be overtly. Uh, I'm just going to just just create this this ministry, but it's like 
just by the normal course of doing life, God is going to create a path of ministry that's unique for you and your wife. Let me say that what you're doing right now, good, keep doing it, make money. That's a great thing. You won't be doing it long, all right? There's some other things, there's some transitions coming much faster than you can imagine. And where there have been uh, kind of a protracted season of things being extremely lean, I want to let you know that, that those days are coming to a close. And there are resources that are about to flood, not just flow, but flood into your household. Amen? Great. You know, we know in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it says that prophecy is given for strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. And as you're sitting there wondering, is this goofy guy going to walk by me and say something? Let me encourage you that there's a spirit of prophecy that is in operation, that Jesus will talk to you right where you are in this moment if you'll allow him to do that. Amen? Lord say to you, my sister, have I prayed over you before? Gosh, you look, fam you look familiar. Wow. You are a powerful woman of God. Dear, I see when, when and, I, and I hear it, but when, when you begin to pray, demons begin to to get real concerned. It's like, it's like bats just go into flight when you even walk up. You've got authority. You've got authority. And dear, God has used you in this house in ways that people just don't know. You have prayed. You've warded stuff off. You have covered the leadership of this house. You have, met, as a matter of fact, you've even prayed for these moments long before they ever came into reality and fruition. You prayed. Holy Ghost, open your, just open this house wide open. You prayed those prayers. And those golden bowls have been overturned. They've been poured back out on this house. But that bowl was full of your prayers. Should you hear this? But listen, my dear, there are prayers for your own family, your own natural family. That word tonight about prodigals, that's you. You're not a prodigal, but you, you, you got some. Let me just tell you, those prodigals are coming home, and they will eat at your table before it's all said and done. Amen. <clears throat> God has also not only preserved your life, you've had more than one shot across the bow. Um, but he's added to it. And I don't mean past tense. I mean prophetic perfect. He's added to it. And that he's, he's going to extend your life. Let me just, and I don't care, and you don't care what the doctors have to say here or moving forward. I want you to remember this word. He's extended your life as well. Amen. Bless you. God isn't finished. God isn't finished. And you you've been you've you've been waiting on certain things. You've been waiting, waiting, waiting. Matter of fact, it seems like most of your life you've been waiting for somebody else either to get out of the way or give you permission. <laughs> and whether it, whether it was growing up, whether it was school, whether it's an employer, what, but let me just tell you, God says the waiting is coming to an end. And I'm going to move and remove everything that has been in the way. 
hear this. God is coming. Dear you, there, there has been a constraint and a restraint. And you've tried to run and it seems like the best you can do is get kind of a little walk and a jog in. But I, I, but I see you running like never before. What do you do, by the way? Say that one more time. Okay, all right. Um, not much longer. Okay? Nothing wrong with what you do. But once again, you've been wrongly defined. It's like others have kind of held you back. Those days are coming to a, coming to a close. And watch me. The next six to eight months, says the Lord, I'm going to release you like you've never been released before. I see you dancing. Now, I, I, don't know what your, I don't know what your background, I don't know what your church background is. All right? But you're going to run some laps before it's over with. Let me just tell you. you, you because God's going to exchange your mourning for dancing. Amen. Amen. Hi. Are you guys a set? Good. Based on the way that you were holding her shoulder, I was really, really happy to hear that. What's your name? Jim. Jim. I can remember that. Um, and, and your name? Tina. Tina. Wonderful. What do you do, Jim? Oh, wonderful. Okay. Kids? Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. You know... I see, God tur- I, I see God rolling some things back and turning some things back. The, and, and the word of the Lord for the two of you is no regrets. No regrets. No regrets. You know, dear, for you particularly, you, you, you roll some things around a lot. You, you kind of, gosh, if, if, if I hadn't, if, if somebody, I wish I hadn't said or done, or, and, and you still sort of torment and you, you do it to yourself, but the enemy then just picks up that narrative and just beats you to death with it, it seems like. And the Lord is saying, the past is the past. And he's wanting you to now turn and walk. The big piece of glass is the windshield. The little piece of glass is what's, in the, what's behind us. And even some dreams, some recurring dreams that you have that come back as well. God is going to restore your sleep those dreams are going to disappear. Hear me. And what you think is finished, or in other, it, well, by finished, I don't mean completed, but that, that there's, there's, there's really no hope, there's no reconciliation, there's no whatever it might be. God says, I am still on the move, and I'm still at work. But no regrets. No regrets. No regrets. It's very important. You know, dear, you're what, this, this man here has... Has, has, has spoken the right things. You know, he's, he's been, kind of been a, a Barnabas and telling you everything that you, you're great, you're amazing, you're beautiful, but sometimes it just rolls right off. You just don't believe it. But let me just tell you, listen to this man because he's reflecting something that Jesus has been trying to tell you as well. Amen? It's re, he's, he's remaking and reworking some perceptions that you have. Amen? You know, brother, there's a lot of skills that you have, but there is a a generation of young men that God is going to give you the opportunity to disciple and mentor, okay? Uh, You're not done, and there is an Abram-Abraham anointing on your life. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have more natural children, so please don't go there. (laughs) Always want to clarify these words. But there's, there, are, there are spiritual children that God is going to bring into your household. And you're going to be like, what in the world do I have to give these guys? You're going to be amazed. And as you just begin to open the treasures of your life, the experiences, the wisdom, and you do have a supernatural gift of wisdom. You know what to say in exactly the right moment. And God's going to use that, this, this ingathering of youth that I spoke about earlier. God's going to use you somehow integrally with that. 
show up, God's going to use you. Amen? It's tremendous. Let me say that God is God is hands on some of you that he is calling you into full-time service in this room. Now, I know that sounds a bit goofy. It's just like, oh, wait a minute, dude. I got education. I got a job. You know, I, 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 what, what, what does that even mean? I don't know. But there are those of you in this room that God has been pestering, bugging you. Something in you that you know needs to be expressed more fully for the kingdom. Listen to me. I'm not talking about necessarily a business card, a paycheck, and an office at the church. But I'm talking about stepping into greater realms of ministry and service than you've ever known before. Some of you here, because you've got a little bit of gray hair or you're follically challenged like I am, you think, well, certainly God's done. No, he's not. I don't care if you're 70 years old in this room. God's been pestering some of you. You know that there's something innate, inherent, God is wanting to make apparent coming out of your life. I want you to hear this. This church is going to have dozens of people added to staff in the coming years, but that's not going to get the ministry load accomplished here. It's going to get accomplished as men and women respond to the call of God wherever they are. Are you with me? And whether you are at Yeti or whatever else you do here in Austin, that's going to be what you do to make money, but what you really do is your minister in the kingdom. And if that's you tonight, I want you to stand up and do it right now. Don't think anymore. You know, look at this. Look at this. Stay standing. Stay standing. The Lord said to you, my sons and daughters, as you have been obedient, and not just in this moment to get on your feet and make yourself known and to be visible. Know, says God, that the greatest days of acceleration and anointing are going to come on your life. Some of you have no idea what the next steps look like. You just took the next one. And I am going to put a path in front of you, says the Lord, that no man could possibly have mapped out. But I'm going to put a path in front of you for my service. And the greatest days of fulfillment are about to come. Some of you have felt this longing your entire life. Some of you came to this church. Some of you came to this church out of church hurt. You weren't born in this house. But you came here and you saw something different and realized this is a place that I can trust this leadership. I can trust that they are hearing and following God. This is a place now that not only can I get healthy and healed, but this is a place that I can come into the greatest days of destiny and fulfillment. And God would say, watch me. Because I'm about to put you on the, on, on, the, on, on the fastest path from one place to the next that you've ever known, says the Lord. Some of you, hear me. Some of you are going to wind up on staff before it's over with. They don't, please, please don't come bring your resumes to these, to these guys. We're, we're not taking CVs here tonight. But God shows me who some of you are. I'm not going to call you out in this moment. It would be inappropriate. But God is actually going to add some of you to the staff here at City Reach before it's all said and done. Could we just thank the Lord for these men and women tonight? You may be seated, by the way.
How many of you know that he is a finishing God? Unlike you and I with our housework, we don't start something that God, <laughs> God finishes everything that he starts. Some of you have been in the throes of starting a healing, but it hasn't been finished yet. It hasn't been fully manifested yet. And if that's you, there's a finishing grace in this room tonight to finish something that God has already started. If that's you, get on your feet. Get on your feet. Now you see those people standing? If you are around them, please lay your hands on them. Lay your hands on them. And ask God right now to finish that which he has started. To manifest healing in that individual tonight, right now. Not at 8 o'clock, not tomorrow at 8 o'clock, right now in this space and in this room. Lord Jesus, do it. Do it. Do it. God, we don't despise process. But God, we're asking in this moment that you complete that which you've started. Yes, because we want it and we need it. But God, that you might get the glory for it. When it's all said and done, it'll be pointed to you, not to us. God, let it happen. Move, move, move in this room right now. In the name of Jesus, finish that where you've started. If you have somebody that's in your extended family and they are waiting on a completed testimony, stand up as well in proxy for them. Could be a parent, could be a sibling, could be a coworker, a neighbor. Get on your feet and stand in proxy for them. If you see somebody standing, get your hands on them. This is how we learn to do this. Pray for them. Pray for them fervently the way you would want to be prayed for, in faith, in expectation. So Lord, finish, finish, finish. God, when you declared on that cross, it is finished. God, you weren't just talking about the end of your natural life. You were talking about moments exactly like this. Done, complete, finished, and well done. God's people said together, A. Man, Give the Lord some praise like you mean it. Come on, like you mean it. Can we just thank Pastor Jim for just... Maybe seated just for a moment. We're going to wrap up here in just about two minutes. I just want to encourage you. I get to see and hear and know some things that you don't about what's going on in our church family. And I can tell you about 75% of the words that were spoken tonight, I directly have immediate knowledge of what that family or what that person is walking through or what they're standing in faith for. And Daniel knows some that I don't even know, and I know some he doesn't. And we just kept looking at each other like, <gasps> like only God can do this it's not the man of God it's the God of the man and I love what Pastor Jim said when the spirit of prophecy is at work it's not the man at work it's the spirit of prophecy at work so God was speaking some things to you today through prophecies given to others and maybe things that weren't even said and I just want to encourage you hold on to that word stand firm on that word 
I, I haven't ever given this publicly. I've given it in, in just a couple private settings, but just shortly after I first got saved, I walked into a church service and and there was a man that walked in the gifts of prophecy and the prophetic, much like Pastor Jim does. And that Sunday morning, I saw him stand up a few other Marines right side of our base and I knew these guys. And the words that were spoken were so unbelievably true. I was, I was blown away by it and I thought, you know what? I want one of those words. So they were gonna have a Sunday night service. I think I may have said this on a Sunday morning. And I thought if I sat in a special seat and did a special thing that it was gonna happen and it didn't, but God saw it through anyway. And when God spoke that word over my life, it's still being fulfilled today. And I'm still standing in faith. Today, this morning, Pastor Jim wasn't here. He was preaching at his home church, then on an airplane. He has no idea what was talked about today. He has no idea what was spoken today and about the church hurt, about the things that God is going to do in our young people. He has no idea, but God does. And everything will be confirmed in the mouth of two or three witnesses. He has no idea that I have been, I seen a spine surgeon just about six weeks ago and they said, you have to have surgery. I've already had surgery once on my upper spine in the Marine Corps and now you have to have it again. This is not going away, it's just gonna to continue to get worse. The longer you put it off, the longer you face potential paralyzation, if that disc that is just a millimeter away from your spinal cord erupts, you could be paralyzed. And I just refuse to hear fear and I refuse to, like I say it in a joking manner, I ain't got time for that, but the truth is I really don't have time for that. But what I do have time for is to allow God's healing to manifest in my body the way he has spoken it and the price he paid on the cross of Calvary. And I want you to believe the same for your life. God is no respecter of persons. I can tell you with integrity right now, I don't know if I have fully received the manifestation of full healing. I can tell you right now, I'm moving my head. If you watched me this morning, I was more moving my body. I know that immediately I have felt a touch from God. And I know that he that has begun a good work is faithful to finish that work. That's the God that we serve. I am set to preach every single Sunday from here, and I've been doing every single Sunday for the last eight or nine weeks, I'm set to preach every single Sunday and cast a vision of where God has taken us to, speak the word that God has been speaking in our house from now to the end of the year except for two. I told you I ain't got time for no surgery, I really don't. And I don't plan to miss a single one that God has asked me to get up and deliver. And I want you to stand in faith with me as I'm standing in faith with you. His promises are yes, and amen. The word amen means it's finished. So Father, I just declare over every infirmity, over every sickness, God, over every hope that has been turned into despair by the enemy, I speak yes and amen. I join my faith with my family, God, and we stand together and we declare that our faith is on the bedrock of Jesus Christ. We declare the name of Jesus over every circumstance, every situation, over every mountain that stands in our way. We declare that you will be left and over every valley that stands in our way we declare that you will be raised up because we follow Jesus at City Reach Church and you are the God of the impossible so we receive it we believe it in Jesus name amen God bless y'all we love you I'll see you this coming Sunday morning